This is probably not the first video you've been watching from Skahoy, so you will already know about our controllers and the concept we call device core. So a device core is the driver in our product that will talk to your video switcher, your video router, your cameras, even software applications. One of these device cores is very special because it turns your product into a panel that is essentially just sending a trigger to an application. So imagine you have a button press and that is just sent to a piece of software as button number 30 was pressed down and now the software needs to figure out what to do with it. This is what you want to have if you develop an application that should integrate with our panels. And in this video I'll show you exciting new development. So there's already a lot of content online about raw panel mode. We have three videos which are a little bit old but they are still true. I just checked them so I don't want to repeat everything inside of these videos but I'm going to recap a little bit in this one and also show you something called topology which is very very exciting for those of you who want to develop raw panel into GUI applications. So let's get started and look at how this works in real life. To get started I want to recap what raw panel is and if you go to the um, existing documentation, you will find references to Python scripts. So I already have a Python script running on my computer here. Right now it works as the server and the panel, the RCP next to me, is connecting to the server the Python script creates on my laptop, okay? So this is the reference. This is where you would first go if you want to see how a Skahoy panel talks to raw panel mode. I just stop the script now so uh, you, you'll see that the panel stops uh, cycling colors and display content and so forth. If I start the script you'll see that the panel is picking up communication with my laptop once again and now you see the colors are changing, the display content is updated because this script is just sending all this information over so you could uh, dive into the source code of the script and, and learn about how to use raw panel mode. This uh, seems to be very, very helpful for many people. I have uh, very little support really for people who want to get started with raw panel when they look into these scripts. And the script looks like this, so I think if, if you know some Python, you should have a fairly easy time um, understanding it. It's, it's really not very long if you uh, just disregard the top of the script, which is a lot of graphics and text for the displays. So that was a little bit about this script that um, I want to show you how the script receives messages because the triggers is all that matters in raw panel, right? So let's uh, move the iris joystick for instance. That's an analog component and you can see moving the joystick brings over a value to the script that uh, currently is just printed in the uh, console here. So we see the value, um, the position essentially of the iris joystick. Guess what happens when I press a button? I get a trigger, so you can see I press the button down, I release it again, and the trigger is shown. If I press this button, you get something else, and so forth. Uh, even four-way buttons are demonstrated like this, so you can see depending on which edge I press, I also get a different digit on the trigger in the serial monitor. Uh, sorry, not the uh, console. If I turn the encoders, I get pulses, and if I use the joystick, that's actually a joystick on an RCP, you will see that I get something called speed values, which I uh, normally, um, I talk about them as intensity values. So that's what you get from a joystick. And, and we'll see that later on the RecFusion Live over here. Now, <coughs> this video is about the GUI application. So let's get that one started. So basically, I just want to stop this one. But before we get to the GUI application, I, um, I need to change something about the RCP. But let's start the GUI application up so um, we have it ready. It's uh, written in Electron. It's online in our Git repository. There are links to it on, si uh, on our website. And um, the application itself is now running in development mode. So um, I'll just frame it here so you can see it. I'll um, remove the development section and here you can see I can deci decide what port number the uh, reference application here will allow you to connect on and it also has something called server mode and that's really uh, what I wanted to show you here because Currently, this panel tries to connect to my laptop as a TCP client. So my laptop has to be the server. Many of you have been requesting reversing that. So instead, the panel is the server and your software is the client. That's, that has some great implications for redundancy that you could have multiple clients connected to a panel, for instance. So to, um, to show you that, I want to bring up a uh, web browser. 
And I go therefore to online configuration because it requires a change in the firmware that gets into the panel. So you basically do that by going to manage media and then you write this little code. Um, it's device call number zero, option number one, set true. That's what it means. It's in the manual, so don't worry. I will save it and then we will wait for an update. All right, the panel is almost updated. There we go. I will open the serial monitor because I feel I want to know its IP address. And it turned out that I enabled DHCP, which is great because then the panel will just plug into your network. Uh, it's requesting a DHCP address. So um, the reason why I need it is because there's something not finished for this video. I hope it will be finished within a very short time. And that is discovery. Unfortunately, the the application cannot yet discover the panel. So I need to know that its IP address was 139. So knowing this, knowing this, we'll now return to the Electron app right here and I will type in that IP address in this field, sorry, like that and enable server mode. So now this application will connect to the RCP over here, all right? And you may not be surprised right now, but this is really amazing because the graphical rendering of the RCP you see on screen is actually coming from the RCP itself. All right, so, uh, you know, that excites me because this is new and I think it has cool applications and uh, implications for your work with uh, raw panel mode. But um, just quickly, let's look at what we have in this interface. Apart from obviously a graphical representation of the panel over here, I also have a uh, way to zoom in and out. I can uh, read its serial number, its model number, I have the version and all that stuff. It's in the manual, okay? So these are just stuff that comes over as a part of the handshake, which is displayed. I can type in commands in this little box if I want. So you could look up in the manual. Um, very helpful if you uh, find some command. Let's uh, find something to turn on a button color, for instance. So um, we could take uh, this one up here, which, well, Actually, I'll leave that over to you. I'll just get on because otherwise we um, will probably lose time. So now, okay, so look at what happens when I press the buttons on the panel. I get something that simulates what we saw earlier in the uh, console. We basically see that component 38 was pressed down. So I press it down and then I release it again. It's It's populated from the top, as you can see. You can also see the actual command being transmitted over here. So uh, if I move the, um, the joystick, you can see those values are reflected. This is the actual command. And over here, you, you see how this is perceived by the system. Notice that for all four-way buttons, this is not a four-way button, for instance. So it's just up, down. But if I press down a four-way button, it is actually telling you which edge of the button you are pressing. That's the interpretation of uh, the number after the um, uh, yeah, the digit at the end of the, um, this, what do you call that? It's a digit, um, um, decimal, uh, after the decimal point, you, you basically detect which edge a forward button has been pressed on. The encoders, same stuff. If I move the joystick, you can see speed values are transmitted. You even see the, the in the reference application, we have uh, decided to render which buttons you are pressing. So you have a little colorful information about that. I don't know. No, it just shows up in red. Now, uh, in yellow. Okay, if I go the other way, if I press a button, you can see it's now highlighted in the, um, the, the panel here. And now comes the cool thing. You can play with the text label in the, um, the, the little display. So, uh, hello. It's now written in the display. I can also put in a value, one, two, three, four, right there. So, you, you basically have a designer for making labels for your raw panels and uh, you can choose if this is uh, DB um, like that you can you, you have various formatting options basically that's going to help you if you if you want to render a shutter speed it's very helpful to be able to uh, choose these different types and we also helped you by showing what the command will look like to make the panel work like that and now I, I can basically copy this line and I could insert it in my own script, but I could also do what I didn't do before, put it into this little command box down here and then change the um, the header to Casper. So now you see my name pops up in that display right there. 
likewise, I guess I could um, basically do this for any display, as you can see. So there's really um, something very, very useful about having this this tool to uh, to design your values. Um, text line one, text line two, and you see it's all rendered right there with values, or you can. Uh, disable the values if you want. You can also uh, decide whether or not it's a value or a label. We have some conventions about that. All that design power is packed into this reference application. And uh, what gets even more fun is when you go to the draw side, because then you can actually live draw your, um, your bitmaps and it will generate the code that you need to send to the panel to have this, this drawn in there. So uh, it won't take long before you think, hey, could I upload a file and then modify it? And yes, one day you will be able to, but right now it's just a little sketch pad for you. Still quite exciting, I think. Um, I like it a lot and I think it has, um, not only as a reference application, but also as a design tool, some really cool features that you'll enjoy. Before we end the video, I would like to show you the Vrec Fusion Live connected to uh, raw panel here. So I'll just disconnect the RCP and uh, Put this one up instead. And there we go. Yeah. And now I want to get back to my excited state from just before where I talked about topology because you now see a graphical rendition of the Rec Fusion Live coming from the Rec Fusion Live itself. The implications is that if you use this to integrate our panels in your software, you can graphically draw any. I mean, really any Skyhoy panel by simply taking the information the panel is sending to you about its, it, its looks and its configuration, which buttons are there, in which coordinate, what they can do, send triggers like presses or encoder pulses or positions like a slider. And then you could build a graphical user interface where you basically pair those triggers with commands in your system any Skyhoy panel will be instantly available to all your customers if you do it that way. That's what topology is and why this GUI application we have made as a reference can be uh, a good starting point for you in your efforts to integrate it like that. Yeah, so that's what I was all jazzed up about. So there's actually another thing, but that's related to the server mode. And I want to show you that we can have multiple panels connected at the same time. So uh, let's take a netcat and connect to this panel which um, on this port, so I should be connected to the panel, okay? So let's just go back to this one first and you can see as I'm pressing this button, I obviously have a response from the um, uh, raw panel uh, reference application. And if you look in my uh, connection I just made with a different uh, prompt with a netcat, you see that I received the same messages from that application. I could actually, and let me just show it. Let's say we click here and I write hello. So now we have graphics in this little display. Yes, I take this line, copy it, and then I put it in here, but now I change it a little bit. So it says Casper instead. We should now see this value updated in the display with my name in the in the title line instead. So now two connections to the same panel and both of them can send messages to the panel. So you need to make sure they are not colliding, but they both get triggers the other way. So there's like a broadcast functionality from the panel as you are moving the, the components of the panel, you get that broadcast message sent back to you uh, uh, in server mode. And that's what I mean with redundancy. You can have multiple systems listening, connected at the same time. So if one fails, the other one can take over and work with the panel. So I want to show you something which is under the hood. This is, um, um, this is also important for you to know really, because raw panel is not just something that is true for the whole panel. And you see that in some of the previous videos I've made where I, I give an example that a panel can actually be split between working with a video router, at the same time also be raw panel with uh, your application. So uh, what I mean, just hang on and see what's happening now. So I will, I will um, bring up the local configuration of the panel. So it basically means by pressing local configuration, I now enabled the internal web server of this panel, okay? The internal web server is now enabled, so I can do configuration. I will now press button number five in this interface, in the web browser of the panel. And um, 
there you can see that for this button, and that is true for every single hardware component on the panel, it has an action associated with it with the value HWC0, okay? Now, I'm going to remove this action. So, whenever I press this button, that action is not executed, okay? And um, I'll press the save button, but I want you to see what happens in the raw panel reference application on this backside here. So I press save, okay, and now watch what happens. Basically, that key disappears from the raw panel application. You saw it? It's not there anymore. Does that make sense to you? I mean, what it really means is that you could take these, now I just selected three different hardware components. I'm removing their actions, the raw panel actions. I could assign different actions, but the fact that I remove them means that they are not anymore going to send messages over to raw panel. You see, if I'm moving the fader, you don't get any messages down there, but if I'm pressing the right buttons that are still raw panel enabled, it will receive triggers. So what does that mean? It actually means that you could have other device cores installed on the panel that talks directly to a camera while the panel is still connected to your application and sending triggers over there. So you can share a panel, okay? That's one thing. The other thing which is important, uh, yeah, and of course, by the way, when you do this, the um, you can update the, the graphics. You should update the graphics because you should only show the hardware components from the panel that will actually receive and send triggers over raw panel mode, right? So, um, the other thing which is important is, uh, let's take button number four. When I press button number four, you can see the messages is that component number four has sent the value down and then up and so forth. But if I go to component number four in my configuration interface, you'll see that I could select a different ID. Let's select 11, okay? Um, no, wait, I'll select, I'll select something that I already have. That would be 10 because this one is 10 up there, it seems, yeah? So I will uh, select 10. Okay, so I select 10. Now, uh, see what happened to that, that button. It actually adds a little label. It says that it's hardware component number 10. Mm -hmm. So when I press this, you see that both the real component number 10 and also component number four, which is now identifying as component number 10, will light up in the panel. So if you go the other way, um, no, I'm not sure actually that I can set labels here. We could try. If I type in hello, uh, no, it's not going to do anything there, but if I type in hello up here, you, you can see that it's, uh, okay, it's a bit confused. So basically, the main point I want to uh, uh, transfer to you here is not that you should have the same ID for two different components, okay? That's a stupid idea. But you can, you, you're not bound to the, the physical number of the component on a panel. This is something you decide. It's just that every raw panel coming out of our shop will have the same ID as the component really has, but you are free to change it. So you could even make an application where component number 10 would mean uh, record, and then you could assign component number 10 to any button you want on a panel. So that's the implications on a deeper level of how raw panel is really implemented on our controllers. Um, and uh, that's what I wanted to show you by ending the video with this demonstration of the configuration interface and um, how that affects raw panel mode. The, the way this is transferred into your application is by means of the map command. And you can see the map command uh, is uh, changing. You can see there um, in, in the um, Telnet application, the map command tells us that component number four is now identifying as number 10. That happened when I made that change in configuration and you can see the other commands there. So that's what the map command are for in case you wondered about it. So thanks for watching this video about raw panel mode. We, um, we are done showing the uh, GUI applications and the server mode and the topology and all the insights to how you can configure the panel behind the scenes.